Brilliant. Flexion extension of the spine. So we'll start with the standing cat curl. We'll hold the backs of the knees and press into the backs of the knees, chin to chest, around the back. Pausing here, a little bit of a shimmy of the hips side to side, just to stretch out, release any tension in the back of the body. And then the reverse, press into the knees and pull elbows in towards the waist and look up, stick your bottom out. So that pelvic tilt as if water's flowing out of the front of the pelvis, chest open wide. So chest forward, shoulders back. And let's toggle between those two. So adding as much additional stretch as you feel you want to by pressing into the backs of the knees and rounding the back. It's shaking out the neck, a little bit of a shimmy side to side. Chest open wide. We can stick with this or start to add on a bigger movement so that as we round the back, maybe we slide the hands down the backs of the legs to the ankles, maybe straighten one leg at a time, keeping that fold, crown of the head to the floor. And then we go back to that cow pose, rounding the back, pull on the knees, here, the option to stay here or reach all the way overhead, stretching and taking the longer back bend, looking up, clasping the hands overhead and stretching. Opening last time each way, rounding the back either in a full fold or in that standing arching cat position. And then the last time, extension of the spine. Either in the bent knee position, shoulders back, shoulder blades together, or reaching, maybe even having a big yawn, and stretching up and back, and release the arms down. With the feet wide, just have a little swing, lifting the back heel so the knee isn't strained, waking me up the spine, and then we'll go for lateral flexion. So we'll use the extended side angle once we're warmed up the obliques and then I'm going to throw in a balance there. So let's start with the legs wide. Start with the right toes turned out to the right and come straight into your extended side angle. Reaching overhead, try and feel a diagonal line, maximum stretch right down to the little toe side of your left foot. Breathing in, trying to feel more space between the ribs and the hips on this left side. And then over to the other side. So right toes pointing forwards, left toes out towards the left wall, and just a simple struggle, extended side angle. So I'm tilting the pelvis, navel to spine, and stretching right into the fingertips. If I'm floppy in the hands, these the whole chain goes floppy. So stretching into the fingertips, stretching so you can get it all the way down the side of the body to the pinky toe. Nice deep breath. So the next time we're adding on a bit of a balance. So the knee and the toes pointing towards the right. Arms open wide, take a stretch here with an option to come onto the left tippy toes and maybe we lift and we take it to the other side. So we take a slight side bend, find something fixed that isn't moving and then maybe we can lift the back leg. So take it side to side a few times. <laughs> I nearly fell back. So we start in that setup of an extended side angle. Come on to the back tippy toes and maybe take a lift. And this tension of stretching up and down through the arms really helps with balance here. A few more times. So we're even ourselves out left and right. Nice big hip opening on one side. And then toe heel with feet in. We're going to take a quad stretch into optional dancer. So let's first of all place the weight into the right foot and let's lift the right foot from your new left foot into the bottom. So if you've got your balance, you can hold the foot, your left foot with both hands, elbows together, knee to the floor, close into the other knee, and feel the stretch down the front of the thigh. So, breathe here. Now, press down through that foot on the floor, the standing leg, 
chest open wide, but front ribs together because we need the core engaged to help with balance it. You can always hold a wall or a chair if you need. Breathe into it. We'll do this twice each side. The second time will be an optional dancer, which I'll talk you through. Switch legs. So you the other foot, right foot into the bottom. Let's try and take time to get the knee and the ankle in line with the hip here. Chest open, but some upper abdominal engagement, navel to spine, tilting the pelvis so the crease at the top of the leg disappears. Top of the head to the ceiling, chin in towards the neck so that this is on the side view, the ear is in line with the shoulder. Okay, when we go back to the first, you can either have the support and take this quad stretch into the hip flexors or turn your hand, palm facing up and place the foot into the hand. By pressing then the foot into the hand, we're stretching across the pecs here and we breathe. Now, if you're okay here in this position, we'll extend that opposite arm to the ceiling. So alongside the ear. Working with your balance here, we've still got that pelvic tips, no crease at the top of the leg. And option now to kick back into the foot whilst we reach forwards through that opposite hand. So an equal and an opposite pressure, think about the seesaw or weighing scales, reaching forwards with your lifted arm and kicking back into the back hand, maybe we take a balance. How did we do? Same leg that was behind, we now take it into the chest for a counter. And let's circle the ankle. Find here to use the wall again for a little bit of balance. Lifted leg, give it a little bit of a shake, and we take that dancer pose or just the quad stretch to the other side. So we stabilize, place the foot in the hand, the palm facing the side wall, thumb facing the back wall. And then start to feel that chest opening. So the pressure of the foot into the hand draws the shoulder back. Other arm lifts, and maybe we stay here. Temptation is the foot to go out to the side wall. Try and keep it tracking behind the hip. So squeezing the glutes, tilt the pelvis, and start to get some tension into those lifted fingertips if you're taking it this far and then pressing into the back hand reaching forwards through the lifted fingers and just finding your way so slow enough that we can pause reconnect through the core feeling where we can go still only every bit of that movement pausing if you can and then we'll take the knee into the chest great let's circle the ankle so still pressing down through your standing foot, lifting up through the body, right into the crown of the head, and then we'll shake out the hip. You're doing very well. Last thing before we come down to the mat, we're taking the legs wide. We may make it all the way down to a squat, but the action is knees and toes turned out, pelvis tilted. So think about as we bend the knees, they're tracking over the toes, the tailbone is going directly down to the floor. We'll add on the pressure between the hands. This helps us keep the chest open wide. And let's just take a few rounds of bending the knees. Now let's think about the spine as being this vertical line. So we've got to avoid tipping forwards. So press the thumbs into the chest bone, shoulders back and down. And as the knees bend, try to keep the head and the chest back and stacked over the pelvis. Maybe the elbows can come into the, the insides of the knees. Maybe that gives us a nice bit of strengthening work in the inner thighs. A couple more times. Now, as with the beginning when we did the cat cow, we can develop this so that then we work the back, backs of the legs as well. But for now, let's just concentrate on the pubic bone coming up to the ribs, core engaged, lovely upper body posture. An option only, if you can come down quite far, maybe the hands come to the floor, but bow the head to the floor and then start to straighten up through the legs and rebuild the spine from the base up. We reset. So go as deeply into 
this as you wish. If your hands come to the floor, just take a moment to lean the knees into the elbows to get the deeper inner thigh stretch. No forcing. Stretch in the backs of the legs and a rebuild of the spine. Shoulders back and down last time. Nice and long spine here. Rip the floor with the feet. And option to roll down before we roll up. So while you have a shake out of the legs and kick back, I'm going to lower the camera and we'll meet on all fours. Are we there? Look at this basking in sunlight. Brilliant. Lovely. So let's have the shoulders directly over the wrists. The knees are hip distance apart. We release those toes at the back and the toes pointed directly back. One round of cat cow, we're going into a balancing cat. So as you breathe in, look up. The, the pelvis, if it's a bowl of water, we're tipping the water forwards. Chest forward, shoulders back, active through the fingers. And then reverse, chin to chest. It's impossible, but try to tip water out the back. So pause here long enough that you've got the biggest squeeze, tightest squeeze in the core, and able to spark. And then come to a flat back. We're extending the right arm and left leg. So left foot, plant the ball of the foot, tilt the pelvis, and we lift the right arm. That's the opposite arm. Now you might pause here and just work with the arm. Otherwise, if you can lift that back leg, but keep the toes pointing down to the floor. As you've got your arm and leg lifted, hope you've got your core engaged, that pelvic tilt, and they're going to make your brain work now. We're going to try to turn, circle the arm and leg in opposite directions. It's not as difficult as it sounds. So the arm and leg, but across the body, and then draw a big arc to open, complete the circle. So nice big circles, but let's try to keep the pelvic tilt, navel to spine. You're working the hip, the shoulder, your core, your brain, you're concentrating. Exploring the hip joint, the shoulder joint, but with control. Try to keep the, the other shoulder directly over the wrist. As we get tired, we tend to sit back towards the heel. Well, circle on that side, place the hand on the floor, tuck your toes under the back, sit back on the heels and circle out the wrists. We do the other side. So if you've got any niggles in the wrist, you may not want to work with the arm, you might just work with the leg. Let's set up anyway and see how you go. Extend that right leg, plant the ball of the foot. Now tilt the pelvis on the navel to spine, pubic bone right up to the ribs. Keep that strength as we extend the left arm. If you're going for the full balancing cat, we lift arm and leg. Pause to feel that stretch across the body, navel to spine. Typical to want to lift the hip, to keep the hips so they're absolutely square. And we take those opposite circles. And we can go across the body, top front hand comes across the nose, the back foot goes across the opposite bottom cheek, going a big arc up and around, and then we complete the circle. Now, if if it's not perfectly going in opposite directions, don't worry. The fact of thinking about it, concentrating, will reducing that chatter in the mind. So try and think about it as uh, developing your powers of concentration. We're also obviously strengthening the arm. It's on the floor. If you feel you've got space for an extra checkpoint, think about about this right hand that's on the floor, pressing down and turning it so you're tightening the jar. Righty tighty. And then let's place the feet on the floor, toes tucked, and circle. Right. To give the wrists a rest, we're going to take a dolphin, which can be static 
or moving. So just find what level's good for you. So elbows to the floor, we're clasping the hands, we tuck the toes, and the head doesn't go on the floor for this. See if you can start to lift the knees, and over time, maybe we can start to straighten the legs so that we're in there like a down dog, but on the forearms. Now, biceps, instead of the biceps pointing into your ears, try to shine the biceps forwards so that there's a little bit of an opening between the shoulder blades. Now we're pressing the whole of the forearms and the knife edge of the fingers, the hands into the floor. Pelvis, think about tipping water forwards so the sit bones rise up the wall behind. If you need to bend the knees, that's fine. Maybe pedal through, but let's try and find length in the spine. So maybe someone's pulling your hips diagonally up and back. Optionally, if you feel secure, we can take the nose gliding just above the floor, forwards and over the fists, and then back again. Now we want to do this with slow, careful movements and with the core engaged. So you'll notice quite quickly how easy it would be to just let the abs pop out and for the front ribs to flop. So keeping the front ribs together, navel to spine, taking a few more forwards and backwards, or if you want, this is a good time to take a puppy pose. So keep on with your dolphin or lower the knees, the hips are over the knees, and pace the hands forward. It's under the chin or the forehead to the floor. The toes are released at the back. So we're either keeping going with the dolphin or just pausing in this relaxing, softening puppy pose or melting heart pose, it's sometimes called. Whether you're in puppy pose or you're still with your dolphin, Take a moment in full child pose and just have a little rock before we lap on our right hand side. We're going to do the torpedo. So this is lying in a really straight line, so much so that you feel like wobbling in the hips. Fingertips of your left hand helping to stabilize. Pelvis tilted so that there's less of a crease at the tops of the legs. So feeling really long, point the toes. Now your top leg will float up, still with the knee and the toes pointing forwards, still the slight pelvic tilt. Now the lower leg, use the inner thigh muscles to lift and meet the top leg. Pause, lengthen the legs, pull in the core, lower the right leg, lower the left leg. Off we go again, four more, five in total. So the pelvis, lift. Now work those stabilizing muscles of the core so that there's less movement in the upper body. Try to relax the shoulders and jaw. Feel the bottom leg pushing up into the top leg before we with control, lower and return. Keep going. Notice how it's, there's a tendency to release that pelvic tilt. Can we maintain it so that throughout we still have that length through the tailbone? Remember, as the legs lift, you press into the top leg before lowering and resetting. You need it there. From here, we'll go on to the obliques. Squeeze. I really feel a lengthening the leg. So, yes, we're pressing the top leg, the bottom leg into the top. We're also straightening, lengthening the legs. So important to work those inner thighs for the sake of strength, stability in your hips, your knees, ankles. Amazing. So let me just demonstrate the next. We'll come up onto the forearm with the shoulder over the wrist. We'll bend the knees in front of the body. There's a gentle curve here. And we're lifting the top leg. And the top arm is reaching as if beyond the calf muscle there. Reach then extend both away from each other. Again, we're only going to do five, so we pause, lifting the knee and the ankle. You can check in with your obliques that they're switched on, also not collapsing in the lower waist. Stretching overhead and reach, 
We've still got a pelvic tilt, so try to avoid any arcs in the lower back here. So it may feel that we're just working the obliques and this leg is just getting heavier and heavier. But throughout, we want the support of those core muscles. Try to keep the neck long here. This stretch and then pull in contraction strongly. We'll have one more. Pull the lips and the knee lifting, ankle lifting, and reaching, squeeze into the obliques, and then take a rest. You can massage out the, the side of the hip here. Leg circles. Again, you can use your top hand to spread stability. The bottom leg could be a little bit bent for stability. And we're taking five circles in each direction without any movement in the upper body. So we avoid collapsing here. If we keep a big gap between the lower side of your waist here and the floor, we'll be using those obliques to keep that lift. We're also keeping the neck nice and long. Keeping the tailbone tucked. Long leg. Now, if it's starting to feel really heavy, unless it's painful, this slight stress of the joints from the back of the five change direction uh, is great because that's going to trigger the body's natural repairing mechanisms. Wherever we stress a joint, a muscle, that's where the body focuses on finding repair, strengthening. And if we don't use those muscles, they just shorten and shorten to the minimum length that they need to be. Ah, oh, that's heavy, isn't it? We're going to take a seat to twist the forward goes to the other side. So this top leg we've been working, place it on the outside of that lower knee and come up to sitting. If you need to extend that lower leg, that's fine. The main thing is hugging the knee into the chest while plugging the sit bone down into the floor. And breathe, you can add on a little massage for the hip here. Spine long, chin tuck, so let's not compromise our posture in this position. If the sit bone is really lifting, maybe a gentle rocking to try and imprint that, that sit bone and pressing down through the sit bones and up through the top of the head with the chin tucked. Breathing in, giving it an extra rub if it's taking its time to soften and release, and then of course we're over to the other side. We'll start with the torpedo. Okay, when you're ready, let's extend the legs out. We're in a straight line here. Tilt the pelvis, core engage, ribs together, navel to spine. Now lift the top leg, re-tilt the pelvis, core's extra strong, and lift your bottom leg and press it up into that lifted leg. Shoulders relax, core's working strongly. Control the lower and control the reset. Retuck, core engaged. So sort of five or towards five, maybe you stop along the way. So it's knowing where there's just discomfort and muscular effort. And we need to try and embrace that and breathe into it. It's only pain where we actually want to give it ourselves for a rest, come out straight away. Otherwise, muscular effort, all good. Embrace it, discomfort, that's fine. It just means we're pushing our boundaries a little bit. Press that lower leg into the top. Feel the weight. You can even check in with those inner thigh muscles when you'll feel them activating. Each time we lift the legs, try to feel like they're a little bit longer. Every time we create space in, in the joints, we're giving a light tug, that right level of tension to the soft tissue. It's just like with a, an elastic band. If you, fit, if you leave that in a drawer for years and you find it and you try and pull it, it will snap. We want to gradually over time keep up a regular, gentle, uh, mindful amount of lengthening and tension onto the soft tissue. As I've been talking, I think we're on our last one. And then we're coming up into the obliques. So on a forearm, nice long neck, slight bend in the knees. And let's start by lifting knee and the ankle and then reaching. Try to avoid collapsing here. And then we'll stretch over. 
Two way stretch, really lengthen and then reach. So throughout, we try to keep the chin into the chest and also try to avoid the head coming forwards. So if we're against, if we do this against a, a wall, the back of the pelvis and the back of the head would both be touching the wall. So even though we're bending, contracting the side of the body to lift the upper body, lift the leg, we're still trying to feel a length in the spine. Big stretch. Even for the leg circles, my leg's feeling a bit heavy. <laughs> if that's any consolation to you. But I know it's not pain. I know the muscles just feeling tired. So I'll push through it as long as no jagged or sharp pain, the wrong sort of pain. We can take a break though and give the hip a little bit of a, a rub and then circles, five in each direction. We can add a little bit of support for our stability here through the front of this. Okay, so five circles, try to go slowly. We don't want to use momentum. We want to just pause at any point, navel to spine, head back in line. So the ears are still in line with the shoulders. So we're can see strengthening the muscles of the hip, but we're using the core and we're being mindful of our posture, the postural muscles, the stuff is collapsing down here. So keep pressing into the forearm, lifting up. If it's too much, then sure, drop your knee down and give it a pat out. But by now we're taking those circles in the other direction. As we get tired, we really concentrate on lengthening through the tailbone. It helps you can press your hand into the base of the spine, gently guide it forwards. Seated twist will feel so great after this last couple of circles, and then let's place the foot on the outside of that lower knee and come up to sitting. It's really tight, lean back on the hands and just have a little shake side to side. Deeper twist, get both sit bones down, and this front knee almost touching the opposite shoulder. So it's a little bit of a spinal twist, but then we're pressing down through the sit bones and rising up through the spine. Breathing deeply, trying to lean into that hip to give it a little bit more release. So however intense the sensations there, try to Build up the intensity of your breath. So if you can practice Ujjayi breath, this is a perfect time to use it. That constriction in the throat, ocean breath. That audible breath in and out of the nose. Breathing, relaxing. Nearly there. Let's give yourself one more restful breath here. Maybe a little rock side to side. We've got one for the core, and then we we'll take a stretch. Home stretch. So let's take the legs out in front of you, lie back, and come to a tabletop position. We're going to hold the head in one hand, but really create a hammock so there's no strain in the neck. Bring the knees into the chest far enough that you can really imprint the spine into the mat. Navel to spine core engaged. From here, the free hand is pressing into the, the opposite knee. So we're stretching the other leg, the free leg, and we're lifting and lowering. So there's a lot going on here. We want to keep the spine exactly where it is. There's no arch in the spine. We're maintaining a neutral spine throughout. We're isometrically strengthening in, in part by pressing the hand into the thigh, the thigh into the hand. By curling the head up, it makes it slightly easier to keep that neutral spine. The movement of the leg, we're then having to switch on the stabilizing muscles of the core because we're destabilizing, lengthening, and then lifting, concentrating on keeping the spine imprinted. Last one, and then we switch legs. Knees into the chest just for a moment. And then hold the head in the other hand. And I'm really creating a hammock for my neck. Knees into the chest so that we imprint, navel to spine, no abs popping. Press that opposite thigh and start to add on 
leg raises. So throughout, I'm helping the neck to stay long. There's no crease in the back of the neck. There's a little bit of a space between the chin and the chest, so I'm not collapsing or forcing the head up. Feeling that deep work into the core, but with the shoulders down away from the ears. Where it gets difficult to keep the spine in neutral, add extra pressure onto that opposite thigh and the thigh into the hand, just to deepen that engagement in the core. Last two leg raises, and then we'll take a full body stretch. When you finish, arms overhead. Here we can arch the spine, stretching out the abdominals. Stretch overhead, spread the toes. Take a little stretch side to side. Before we finish, just angel arm, the wings, wings, the arms down, and hold the knees to rock up to sitting. We're just sitting cross-legged and giving the neck a little rock. So fingers over the shoulders. Press the fingers in and draw the hands down as we look up. And then the reverse. Press into the soft tissue, press it back and drop the chin. Twice more. And then we roll the shoulders. Forwards up, back and down. And then turn the head side to side. And then hopefully, if you're ready to start the rest of your day.